morning, America. I'm Cortland Taylor. And I'm Elisa Hassan. This just in, a verdict has been reached against John and Timothy Regis of Adelphia Communications. In case you have not been keeping up with the trial, John and Timothy were accused of committing numerous fraudulent acts, which included using Adelphia as their own personal loan agency. On this segment of Fraud Flash, we will take you through everything we know about the case. Here is some footage that we caught from the initial arrest. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? When you were eight and you had bad tricks. Gucci gang, 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 Gucci gang. Spread their rats on new chain. My blood do. Ooh, I I forgot name. I can't bob in the wet rain. Ooh, rather go and bob. Tell me what you wanna do. What you gonna do? Hold it right there. Are you John and Timothy Riggis? Timothy. Yeah, I'm John. Who are you? Y'all are coming with us. We're the FBI. Put your hands behind your back. Wrong? What, what, what is this? What? Did, what, what? what? Stick what your fingers in what? here. I don't know. It'll be okay. It'll be okay, John. Then. All right. We've got the best lawyers. Come with us. Oh okay, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm not even worried. Mr. Vegas, do you have anything to say about No comment. The Tim, don't say anything. Don't no say anything. Can you buy a no comment. Your daughter? No, no comment. Do you have no anything comment. to say to the people in the town? Don't no say. comment. Adelphia Communications Corporation was founded in 1952 by John Regis, and by the mid-1990s, Adelphia was in its prime, being the sixth largest telecommunications provider in the United States, with a stock price as high as $84 in May of 1999. Their main competitors were Comcast, Cablevision, Echo Star, Cox Communications, and Hughes Electric, with low threats of any new entrants into the industry due to high cost to enter. Since its inception, Adelphia relied heavily on debt financing, which made them one of the largest privately held corporations before their IPO in 1986. The company and its operations began to grow at a tremendous rate, leading to the addition of many subsidiaries. With pressure to meet Wall Street expectations and to continue to appear as if they were a growing competitive telecommunications provider, John and Timothy Regis perpetrated an accounting scheme failing to disclose over $2 billion in debt that was used for personal gain. The dot-com bubble that they were riding on in the early 90s burst for Adelphia, causing their financial condition to dwindle and the stock price to, to fall to $16 in 2002. We have interviewed people at the SEC and the Deloitte auditors of Adelphia and have those exclusive interviews now. Dun, dun, dun. Good morning, Mr. Deloitte. My morning. name is Sonny and That's I'm with Sonny. the SEC. Sit down, please. So, can you address why you did not look into Adelphia's higher debt to equity ratio, which was around four times higher than its close competitors? Um, I mean, we noticed Adelphia's high debt to equity ratio, but I mean, it was not an indicator for fraud. It was not uncommon for uh, telecommunication companies to rely heavily on debt financing. So, I mean, also Adelphia was growing at a fast pace at the time, so I think it was pretty justified. So, okay, so what about five out of nine Adelphia's board members were from the Rikas family, mm -hmm. which made the company a higher risk client. What did you do to address the risk? I mean, well, Adelphia was a family held you know, business before its IPO, so um, it has been doing well since then. So you didn't think it would you know, cause any issue to have family members on the board. And so, That's it? We're, we're, we're sorry. All right, I guess you did an amazing job not catching that fraud. Thank you for the time. Thank you. I have with me Sunny from the SEC to discuss the Adelphia fraud. So can you tell me how the SEC uncovered the Adelphia fraud? Yes, so we were tipped off by an earnings call that led Adelphia to disclose its over $2 billion off balance sheet outstanding debt. And what did that uncover? So to start with, John Regus was permitted to take $1 million from the company on top of his compensation, and also to keep Adelphia's stocks from declining. The Regus family took money from the company's slush fund to purchase Adelphia's stocks. 
but they did not record the stocks as treasury stocks. Instead, we recorded the stocks in the family's private uh, portfolio that inflated the stock's price. Another thing that um, Adelphi's financial statements failed to properly disclose the loans to the Adelphi, to the Rickers family and to its subsidiaries. Can you tell me some red flags that a fraud like this could happen again? Yes, um, an analysis of the fraud triangle can reveal some of the flags. Take Adelphi, for example, sure, of the fraud triangle. There are three elements, pressure, opportunity, and rationalization. So to start with, the Rigas, the Rigas family had the perceived opportunity to commit the fraud. Five out of nine of the board members were from the Rigas family, which led to poor internal control. In addition, the Rigas family was respected and trusted by the employees and the community. So when the stocks were declining, the Ricks family had the pressure to continue to show earnings. And they also thought they needed to keep up this, the lifestyles and the family reputation in the community. So they continued to borrow more money to keep up with those expectations. They were also able to rationalize their fraudulent actions. They thought they were the owners of the company, so there was nothing wrong spending the money they owned. And they thought they were doing good for the company by purchasing the company's stocks back. Besides, they thought they were spending the money in a good way by helping people in the community. So taking into account all three elements, the, the um, Adelphia fraud could be explained by the fraud triangle. Now that we have background on the fraud, let's turn to John and Timothy Regas to hear their side of the story. With our personal investigation, we found that there was a lot of spending of Adelphia's money uh, to buy things not related to the business. Can you explain some of those purchases? Well, uh, all the spending uh, was either for Adelphia or for the community. Um, but I'll go over some of our spending. We gave a ton of money back to the cha many charities that Adelphia was involved with. So Tim, how much are we spending in charity today? You know, I'll say, you know, everything in this bag. Sounds good to me. Let's go. We need money! Money, 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 money! money. money. All right. Well, Every charity! Money, money, money! Money, money! Here you go. We were in the process of constructing a golf course for $13 million. You know what, Dad? This will be a great spot for a state-of-the-art golf course. Dude, Adelphia could totally pay for this. It would be great for the company. Yeah, Adelphia could pay for everything. Oh, yeah, they can. <laughs> I even reduced my dad's spending allowance. So, Tim, uh, my compensation, though, is going to remain the same, right? No, we're going to have to cut back because I can't get the books to add up right, so you can only have $1 million a month. So, you, not, every, not every day, a month. Tim, uh, you were my favorite son, but you know, I might have to be looking at another son here soon for CFO. We also purchased the hockey team, the Buffalo Sabres, and frequently purchased tickets for our family and friends. So what about all of Adelphia's investors that were not aware of these financial transactions? Uh, Deloitte audited Adelphia and gave us a clean opinion every time. Um, I'm sorry if I did anything ever wrong. So how are our finances, finances looking, Tim? Are we doing good? Well, we're running low on cash, so I did a, um, a little trick that I thought you, know, you wouldn't have a problem with. Um, I borrowed some debt from our family-owned car dealership and some other of our entities, but to keep it off the books, borrowed it from them. And um, so, yeah, this money's ours now. Uh, yeah, it's totally off the books. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, uh, make sure they're off the books and... Uh, we're looking good now. Yeah. It's lunchtime. Dad, Deloitte is coming. Hide the money. Oh, crap. I get my job.
John Regis was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but due to poor health, he may receive a, pr a passionate release given that he serves at least two years. Timothy Regis was sentenced to 20 years in prison and his family forfeit. The SEC settled with the Regis family for $1.5 billion, of which $715 million went to a victim fund. Adelphia's external auditor, Deloitte, had to settle with the SEC for $50 million. Adelphia did not release a set of financial statements for the year ended 2001 due to the fraud, and the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2002. Eventually, Adelphia's assets were purchased by multiple competitors, including Time Warner and Comcast. Ultimately, Adelphia's downfall was created by poor corporate guidelines and governance, as well as the Regis family sense of entitlement of all of Adelphia's funds. Hopefully, this will serve as a lesson to other companies. That's all that we have for today on Fraud Splash. See you next week. Thank you. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang.